The Huskies have a new coach for their UW men's basketball program, so let's get to know him a little bit more. Danny Sprinkle joins us now on the Emerald Queen Casino Sportsbook Hotline. Hey, Coach, how's it going? Doing great. Go dogs. How's you guys' day going? Uh, fantastic. Uh, oh. You are talking to a former dog, but also a coog. But both of us, oh. <laughs> both of us, excited to get to know you a bit more here. Um, and uh, and obviously, we're gonna, you know, we want to know about your coaching philosophy and all this. But man, this is our first time talking to you. So I mean, what was the conversation like with your family when you were offered the Washington job? It was awesome. You know, I talked to him. It was actually after we got back from the NCAA tournament, uh, kind of when I knew, you know, things were really going down that path. Um, and I think it was Sunday night or whatever when we flew back and got off the charter. And it was just me and my mom and dad. And uh, so it was pretty cool. You know, it was about midnight uh, just around the uh, the dinner table. And I told him, and obviously with my dad's history here, um, you know, and, you know, some family living in Seattle, like it's been, it was, it was, it was pretty special. Man, that had to be awesome for you. Um, I'm not a, I'm a coog, but I'm, I'm a realist. You know, you, you're going to get love and support from me all day, coach, um, especially because you were born in Pullman. So you got some cougar blood in you anyway. So it's all good. Uh, hey, no, man, I told, I don't, I was born there just because my dad was coaching at university of Idaho <laughs> and they had, they didn't have a hospital in Moscow at the time. So hey. I had to be born. Hey. in Pullman. Stop trying to claim deny, our coach. Bob. Deny all you want, coach. <laughs> you were born in Pullman. It's all love. I'm, I'm just giving you a hard go. time. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Hey man, you've, um, you've had a lot of success and I love talking talking to coaches who've had the ascend that you have because there had to have been people along the way to, to help you that you learned from and then kind of developed your philosophy around your program and your teachings. Um, who's that been for you in your life when it comes to developing your program and your philosophy? Yeah, I mean, you know, first and foremost, my, my dad, uh, you know, he was a football coach, uh, college and high school. Uh, but then when I really started cutting my teeth, you know, was with, was with Bobby Braswell at, at Cal State Northridge. He was the first one to hire me. Uh, as kind of a grad assistant at the time. And I spent, you know, almost 11, 12 years with him at Cal State Northridge. And that's where I really learned how to run a program, how to be detailed, like every aspect of the program we had to do it because we didn't have many resources. And then I spent six years at Cal State Ford Fullerton with Deidre Taylor, um, who really opened my eyes to, you know, him letting me be, be like the head coach or whatever my responsibilities were. Uh, and so it was, it was tremendous, you know, but those two, um, another coach I worked for, you know, Brad Hughes at Montana State, and then the coach I played for, you know, Mick Durham. You know, those guys all, like, there's a little bit of them in me. Every day, there's a, you know, I find myself saying things or sayings or or being detailed on scouting reports or daily planners uh, that, that come from those four guys. What are um, maybe one of the bigger challenges you've encountered along the way, either a tough lesson, um, you know, maybe a really tough loss, a moment of learning that, that you kind of encountered along your way here? Yeah, I mean, obviously there's a, there's a ton of tough losses. You know, obviously yeah. when we got let go at Cal State Northridge, um, you know, they brought in a new AD and a new president, and there was really no justification for why we were being let go because we had a team that was coming back that probably would have won the championship. Uh, but, you know, that's when you kind of learn the business aspect of it. Um, and then luckily I was able to bounce back on my feet at Cal State Fullerton with Deidre Taylor, you know, who gave me an opportunity. And so, you know, that that was probably the hardest. Um, you know, just like, I mean, like they say, you're not a coach until you've been fired. <laughs> and so it kind of it wakes you up to things. But, you know, that and being able to, you know, just bouncing back. But that's what we tell our players all the time, like next play you know, responding to adversity. How do you handle that, that type of stuff? And, you know, it, it, it helped me grow. Coach, you've been to the, uh, or led your teams to the tournament three times, twice with Montana state once recently with Utah state. Um, what, what's the, what's the difference in regular season, your conference tournament, and then getting to the big dance and, uh, and how do you prepare your team for those moments? Yeah, you know, like we talk about it a lot. Like we'll talk about it in summer workouts. We'll talk about how we're going to play at the end of February and March and, and how like what we're doing from a toughness standpoint and, and drill-wise, like it's developing us to be our best at the end of the year. I know how games are won in, in February and March, and it's by players. You know, you have to have guys making shots. You have to have guys getting the big rebounds or the big stops. And you have to have that built into your culture or you have no chance. And, uh, you know, so we, we talk about it a lot. We almost kind of speak it into existence, you know, and uh, that way our guys are prepared for the moment.
How often do you still take in your dad's advice? I saw, I wasn't at your introductory press conference, but saw tons of video and your dad looked elated. I mean, he was like yeah. one of the first people that we saw on camera there and and obviously so supportive of you, uh, Bill is, and, and obviously it's his alma mater, so he's probably just elated. But how often, you know, just as a father, I would imagine, does he kind of peer over and go, you know what you guys should do in this one? Yeah, you know what? Like he he's he's never been he's never been that guy. Oh, that's good. You know, but he'll oh he'll ask. You know, <laughs> or he'll be like, man, what was this kid doing? Like, hey, what what's he doing at the free throw line? Like, yeah. what what? You know, he'll he'll ask that, but he'll never tell me what to do. But he'll he always you know he'll send me motivational texts. He'll send me you know oh, books. Uh, you know he he writes me letters to this day. Like he he's a tremendous like writer and like expressing his feelings that way. You know, and, and I love getting those in the mail. And he not just doesn't do it for me. Like he does it for, you know, other coaches in Montana or even my friends that are going through hard times. And that's that's just one of the special traits he has. But, you know, it's I read those letters all the time. You know, and he, he probably doesn't know that. But it's like I do and I get something from him that I can, you know, hopefully feed into my players or my staff, you know, that, that help me on a daily basis. Coach, as you know, um, the college game is changing with just the resources that these players um, have and NIL deals yeah. and all that. And and one of the one of the great things about this state is that there is a lot of local talent when it comes to hoop. What's your plan of attack when it comes to locking down this talent? And how has your coaching changed with the game when it comes to just the resources players have and, and the influence they have? Yeah, you know, I mean, it is hard. You know, it, I mean, the, the whole college landscape's changed. You know, and and it's. You know, local kids, they, they might be going other places, you know, like it, it's, it's transactional now, you know, it, it is. And so it's kind of, if you, if you have the money, they'll stay. If not, like somebody will pay them somebody, somebody else or something more or whatever. And so, and then there's kids, you know, but we have to find the right fit for us, for our university, you know, that, that want to play for Washington. They don't want to play for themselves. They want to play for Husky basketball. And that's important because that's been the culture here. And when you look at when, you know, Coach Romar and some of the best teams that ever played here, like they were playing for the name on the front of the jersey. You know, and it's I don't know it's easy to say not the back, but like that's that's why Nate Robinson and Brandon Roy and you know Coach Conroy, like that's why those guys were so great here is because Seattle was so important to them. You know, and that's it is a change in the kid today. Like it is different because they are getting paid a lot of money you know, to play. And there's a lot of pressure on these kids to, you know, produce. Like if we're going to pay you, you better produce, you know? And so it's a, it is a different time. Um, And that's why you see kids that, you know, they're not patient anymore. Like they don't want to develop like, Hey, I'm going to come in as a freshman. I'm going to learn from the senior and then I'm going to get better as a sophomore and then a junior. Those days are over. If you bring in a highly touted freshman and he doesn't play or gets beat out, he's leaving. You know, and it doesn't matter if he's from Seattle, if he's from L.A., if he's from Houston, like wherever they're from, like they're leaving. You know, mm-hmm. they all want they want to play. And, uh, you know, and, that, and that's what that's the hardest thing about shaping a team and shaping a color, culture these days. Now, Coach, I know you're not necessarily going to have an answer for this one just yet, but just to peek in on where this is on your priorities, um, obviously UW's top 2024 recruit, Zoom Diallo, sounds like maybe non-committal. We, you know, we don't really know what's going to happen there. Where does retaining him kind of land on your list of priorities? Have you been able to have any conversations with him? Uh, yeah, I don't know how much I can speak on an NCAA because he he hasn't signed anything, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I can't really say his name. But yeah, I mean, obviously we're we're actively recruiting him. Okay. Um, your yep. coach. Oh, I'm sorry, coach. Um, uh, when guys get new jobs, you, you got to assemble that coaching staff, right? Um, what's yeah. that process like for you? Are you bringing guys over from your last couple stops? Uh, what's the plan of attack there? Yeah, you know, I have uh, I have Andy Hill who's been with me uh, the last two years. He's He's phenomenal. Um, he's actually from the state of Washington. Uh, you know, he spent 10 years at Utah with Larry Kristoviak. Uh, so he, he's, he's been at the highest level. He's recruited pros. He's a tremendous person, developer, coach, and uh, really excited to have him. And then, you know, the rest of my staff, I'm, I'm actually filling out. I can't really comment on them right now either uh, until, until they sign some contracts. But, you know, and then, yeah, then the plan is to, you know, with, with some of my guys that, you know, I'm trying to get them other jobs too, or staying at possibly at Utah State. But if they don't, uh, then then I will find a role for them here. 
Um, hey, Coach, I know that this is also going to be dependent on the players you have, so this is subject to change. Yeah. But i got to be honest, Husky yeah. fans keep asking us because they've gotten a little tired of seeing strictly zone defense played. So I don't know how much you can comment on your actual approach when it comes to you know coaching and your defensive or coaching philosophy. But A, how often do you plan on utilizing that compared to man? And B, tell us a bit about how you like to coach and, and how you like to approach things. Yeah, you know, we, we – we... I mean, it's kind of old school. Like we, like they're going to be tough and physical. Like our guys, we're going to guard. And uh, you know, like I said, I know that's how you win games late in the season. And you know, I and mean, we we've been primarily probably eighty five percent man to man team mm. um, in all my you know five years as a head coach. And then we're you know you do have to mix in zone. Coaches are too good and players are too good. Like you have to throw some change of pace. Um, our zone has mostly been a one three one kind of half court trap and just you know and i think with the athletes we're going to be able to get here that's going to be really effective at times um but we're gonna you know we're gonna to have to be a man-to-man team um you know i mean you look everywhere you're gonna to have to be able to guard and, and be physical and, and we're not out pressuring as much you know we're more contained we're keep our guy in front and make them score over us like be disciplined be in the gaps and that way we we have our rebound responsibilities taken care of and you box out your guy and then we're going the other way and then offensively, you know, we're going to play, we're going to play fast, you know, on misses and turnovers. Like we played as fast as anybody in the country the last couple of years. And I don't, I don't want to change that. You know, I think you letting guys utilize their talent and their speed and athleticism, you know, that's, that's what I want them to do. You know, if we do get stuck in the half court, then we're going to run a set and we're going to get our guys that our scores or our, you know, our creators, the ball to, to be able to give us the best chance to get the best shot. Coach, last one I got for you. Um, yeah. I love Stacy asked this question um, when we speak to athletes. She even asked me a couple of times. Uh, but just your your most memorable moment as a coach so far, Lena, because I assume you're going to do great things at University of Washington and uh, bring that prestige back. But up to this point, man, what, what's been your, your greatest accomplishment or, or, or greatest moment, mm-hmm. fondest moment as a coach? Yeah, you know, probably our first championship at Montana State, you know, because it was – you know, it was my first championship as a head coach, like going to the NCAA tournament. You know, I think it had been 25 years. You know, it had been since my freshman year playing. Like, that's how long it had been since Montana State had been to the NCAA tournament. So, like, seeing the elation on on the fans' faces and my parents and the players and, you know, but, like, seeing people that have had season tickets for 30, 40, 50 years to, like, experience that again, like, that that's something I'll never forget. And just being able to, you know, the way you know, repay Leon Costello, who was the AD who took a chance on me, you know, the president, Wade Cruzado at Montana state. Like I, I felt like I owed that to them. They gave me the opportunity and, and it was my opportunity to, to, to pay them back. Hey, uh, last one before we let you go. It has nothing to do with what's going to happen at Washington. Again, like Bump said, yeah. I'm fully confident. I cannot wait to see the team you're going to roll out and can't wait to watch you guys. And, uh, you know, you get a nice, beautiful summer here in Seattle to to be the background drop while you're working on that. But uh, we're actually about to talk about Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and, and last night's game. So my last question is, is actually just whether or not you caught any of the game and, and what you think about Clark. I, I caught a little bit of it. Uh, I wish they could both come play for us. Like, <laughs> uh, like our men's Same. team. Yeah, like our men's team. Like, yeah. I love watching them. And I was telling our staff the other day, I said, or the couple of guys that are with me, I was like, if you name the superstars, I said, name the superstars in, on the men's side right now. And they kind of, we we're kind of sitting there, and there's like one or two names. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, name the superstars on the women's side. And I, there's like 10 of them. Yeah. And I was like, mm-hmm. it's it's so great for for women's sports and women's college basketball. But I mean, there's so many of them and it's, it's awesome to watch. And, you know, and, and I know a lot of the, you know, women that are coaching on the, on the women's side and just to see the, like they're getting so good. It's, it's unbelievable. Their athleticism and speed. And uh, I mean, it, yeah, it's fantastic to watch. And But you see like, I mean, she's hitting shots from half court. Like it, it's ridiculous what she's doing, you know, and, and hopefully, Hopefully there's a, there's a couple of young girls that are seeing that that are able to do that. But, I mean, it's almost one of those generational yeah. talents. And it's it's fun because there's a, there's a couple of those generational talents in college right now. He is Washington men's basketball coach Danny Sprinkle, kind enough to join us on the Emerald Queen Casino Sportsbook Hotline. Thanks so much, Coach. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Go dogs. <laughs> Go dogs. Thank you.